Okay, so now here we have one more set of animals and now we are going to compare one more external feature of animals. So let us take the cow, whether it has external ear or not. Yes, it has external ear. Does it have hair or feathers or scales on its body? The cows will have hair on their bodies. Uh, the next one, rat. The cows, even though the hair is not seen, the hair is present on certain parts of its body. So it may not have hair like some dog's fur, but it may have a certain amount of hair. Rat, it has external ear and it has hair. And if you see the crow, it is not having external ear, it is not having hair, it is having feathers. And if we take the pig, pig, it is having external uh, the hair, external ear it has got, hairs on the body and fox, external ear and hairs, hen, no external ear, no hair, feathers and camel has got external ear and hairs and duck, it is having no external ear, no hair but feathers and a frog. Frog, it is having no external ear, no hair, no feathers. Maybe having uh, a very little scales on their bodies. And elephant. Elephant is having external ear, hairs, and no feathers and no scales. So even uh, buffalo, pigeon, cat, peacock. If you observe that, we can find it. Like so, we have uh, sorted out some of the animals. Here, what can we observe? See that the animals that have external ear, they have hairs and they give birth to the young ones. So from this table, we can understand that the animals that give birth to the young ones, they have certain characteristic features like external ear and epidermal hairs, the hairs on their skin. So hair on the epidermis, epidermal hairs and external ear are the feature of the animals which give birth to the young ones. Whereas the animals that lay their eggs, they have either feathers or scales and they do not have any external ear. So that is the characteristic features observed in egg laying animals. So basically if we see how the animals are producing the young ones, we see two ways. In two ways the animals produce their young ones. So the reproduction Depending upon the reproduction, animals can be classified to oviparous, that means animals which lay eggs, and viviparous. Viviparous means animals that give birth to the young ones, offsprings directly. So, animals are classified into two groups according to the method of uh, the way they reproduce, they give birth to the young ones. Now, let us see the modes of reproduction, different modes of reproduction. So don't get confused that these two are not the different types of reproduction. Animals are made into two groups. So grouping of animals, the method uh, in which they give birth to the young ones. That is, a, there is a small difference, but both the animals, they undergo the sexual reproduction and they produce, but in the production of the babies, the difference is their oviparous, viviparous, not this is two types of reproduction. Don't confuse. Let us see the different types of reproduction here, modes. Asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. So these are the two different types of reproduction or two different modes of reproduction seen in animals. Asexual, sexual. We observed the same kind of asexual and sexual reproductions in plants also. In seventh class when we studied about reproduction in plants. There we studied asexual reproduction, sexual reproduction. So we understood that sexual reproduction means fusion of male and female gamete takes place. One male cell and female cell should be combined to produce a zygote, that is sexual reproduction. Whereas in asexual reproduction, the organisms are produced without the fusion of male and female gametes, that is male and female reproductive cells. Now first let us observe Asexual reproduction in animals. 
In plants, we studied certain examples like in bryophyllum. So the leaf will have the leaflets, uh, small plantlets, which can be planted. So in such a way, in animals also, we see different kinds of uh, different organisms participating in the asexual reproduction.